student. Again, I am Mazi Udoji Kingsley, your mathematics teacher. And today we'll be looking at another branch of mathematics, which is mensuration. And of course, um, before we went on first time break, we were already discussing areas of some solid shapes. So in as, due to, we are going to continue from there. Now, today we'll be looking at areas and volumes of solid shapes. That is the topic. Then areas and volumes of, I'm going to pick the one we are going to be treating first, sphere, hemisphere, torus, and disc. Okay, good. So now, this is the conversion table. For you to do anything, now, linear measurement. We have one meter equals to 100 centimeter. You remember your JSS2, you were taught King Harry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk, kilometer, hectometer, and all that. So if you use that, you find that one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Now, when it's in metric, when you're in area, what do you do? You square both sides. Area is in meter square or centimeter square. So you square both sides. Meter square means meter, one, one meter square means one meter times one meter, which will give me one meter squared. 100 meter, 100 centimeter square means 100 times 100, that will give me 10,000. Centimeter times centimeter will give me centimeter squared. So, one meter square equals 10,000 centimeter square. We've done these two. So, what I'm going to be introducing to you is volume and capacity. Now, volume is in meter cube. Or cubic meter. So that means you have one meter raised to power three, 100 centimeter raised to power three. Remember, we are taking everything from here, this place. This is our yardstick. So now, one meter cube is one meter times one meter times one meter, which will give me one meter raised to power three. Of course, 100 times 100 times 100 will give me a million. In other words, one meter cube is equal to one million centimeter cube. Do you understand this? Now, volume. Most time you calculate volume, but some cases you'll be asked for liters. Let's say, take example, our reservoirs at home are in liter, not in volume. What do I mean? You have a keg in your house, we call it jerry can. 25 liter, 10 liter, you can go, your mother will go to the market, I want to buy oil. I want to 5 liter, the 5 liter. How? These are conversions. So the liter, the volume is the content, but the capacity is the carrying power of the container or the solid shape, the carrying power. Now that is the capacity. And how do you convert it? You say one liter equals 1,000 centimeter cube. So if you have a, a jerry can at home which says five liter, you can convert it to centimeter cube. And of course, meter cube is 1,000 liters. You have seen this, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, this tank that carry fuels, or PMS, premium motor spirits. You see them, or diesel, or engine oil. You see them, they will write 40,000 liters. You can as well on your own, okay, how many centimeter cube is in that car? Or how many meter cube is in that car? Or in that lorry, or truck, as the case may be. So this is how you convert. I hope this is taken. Good. Now, I'm going to give you just two of it so you compare. A sphere, you know, I've told you. What's a sphere? A sphere is a circle that you know. But when you say circle is, does it actually exist? Find out. But a sphere, when you talk about a sphere, we'll be talking about ball, football, soccer ball. We'll be talking about metal rod. A ball, sorry, metal ball. We're talking about orange. We're talking about something that is that that are circle in nature, but they are 3D. 3D means that they have, they can be felt. They are real. Now, a sphere. What? How do you know a sphere? It is perfectly symmetrical. What do I mean? Any way you cut a sphere, you have a hemisphere. What is a hemisphere? A hemisphere is half of a sphere. Hemisphere is half of a sphere. Hemi means half. Do you understand this? I've told you this before, but for the purpose of recording. Now, the, it is perfectly symmetrical in the sense that if you pick an, a, a sphere, you cut it, it is perfect. Now we have, it has no edge or vertices. I've explained to you what an edge is, what a vertex is. An edge and vertex, you can only find it in a flat surface, like you have cube and cuboid. 
and then it is non-polyhedron. Find out this. We'll be talking about it, of course. So, polyhedron. Now, we come to torus. Torus is like your disc, but a perfect example of a torus is your donut with a hole. A perfect example of a torus is your boat. You know, boat you used to tie knots with a hole. The perfect example again is your tube of tire or tire itself with a hole. Now that is it. Now the hole from this part of the hole, from the middle of the hole to this joint is the small letter R, which is the small radius. Now the big part from this to this point is this big radius, the, the big uh, radius. And of course, if you extend it, it becomes the diameter. You know that already. So let's proceed. Now, how do you know? It is a folded cylinder with a hole. I hope you know that if you cut a tube of tire and you stretch it and you pump it, it becomes a cylinder. If you carry a host of water, which is a cylinder, and you squeeze it, in, turn it into a circular form, it becomes a torus. Now, it has a donut shape. I've told you that already. It has no edge or vertex. It is non-polyhedron. Good. I hope you understand this. And like I said before, I will, in next class I will explain it, but I want, you, I want you to do it yourself. What is a polyhedron? What is it? Now, we move to the next one, formula. I'm going to give you this formula and I want you to capture it and use it subsequently because all I'll be doing next is just come and we'll solve. All we do is apply. Like I told you, mathematics is all about formula. Mathematics is all about formula. And that's why it's the simplest subject in the world. Get the formula, substitute correctly, and then work and get your answer. And of course, you can apply. It's very, very applicable. Now, it's fair. The total TSA means total surface area. Total surface area. The total surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. The r is the radius, we know. And pi is the constant, which is always between 2 over 7, or except you are, you are given otherwise. Now, the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Pi r raised to power 3. The r is 1 raised to power 3. Now, hemisphere, like I told you, hemisphere is half of a sphere. If you divide 4 by 2, you get 2. So, 2 pi r squared. And then that is the surface area. Surface area. We have total surface area. The total surface area is when you cut a sphere, like your orange, if you cut it into two, what happens? You find that the edge is also a circle. If you cut orange into two, the edge is also a circle. The, the, top, the top surface is also a circle. Not the edge, sorry. The top surface. Now, that means the two pi r square multiplied by the circle, the surface is forming, which is pi r square. You get 3 pi r square. You add, sorry, not multiply. Now, volume, they have the same volume, whether surface or not. The volume of a hemisphere is 2 over 3 pi r cube. Of course, if you divide this 4 over 3 by 2, you get 2 over 3. Do you understand? Now, we have torus. Torus, the total surface area of a torus, if you look at it, you find that you'll be having two circles. Area of a circle is pi r square. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the um, circumference, 2 pi r, circumference, 2 pi r. So you check it out. 2 pi r multiplied by 2 pi r. You have 4 pi square r capital R. Don't mix the two. This is a small r, the small radius, and this is a big radius, and I've demarcated them here. You'll be given in the question, so you'll not get confused. So, can we continue? Of course, we can. Volume is 2 pi r multiplied by pi r square. You should know pi r square, where it's coming from. Pi r square is the area of the circle. So, if you multiply that, you have 2 pi square, r square, then big r. Can we continue? Can we continue? Yes. Now, a disk. The area of a disk will not come in here much because a disk is more of a subtraction shape. Composite, we're coming to composite shape. So we have the uh, pi r squared, the big circle r, minus pi r squared, the small circle. If you check, this is also a disk. But the difference between a torus and a disk is 
a torus has another circle embedded in it. But without this circle, if you remove this smaller circle here, this is a disc. Do you understand? So, and of course, when you have a disc, this is the small r and this is the big r. Do you understand this? Now let's come back. And the volume of a disc is pi r square. What is pi r square area of a circle? Multiplied by its thickness. A disc has a thickness. You'll be given the thickness. Now, let's, I think you understand so far. We are going to do one example that will cover hemisphere. And when we are doing it, we we'll do both the surface area, the volume, so that we we'll know that a sphere is over. Then I'll give you assignments then in your schoology. Then after that, next video we'll be doing uh, examples on hemisphere, torus, and disc, if time permits. Now let's move to example. The diameter of an iron ball used for short put, you know the game of short put? Of course, you, you have learned it in your PHE. It's 12 centimeter. Remember we say diameter. Calculate the first, total surface area. Second, capacity. And of course, you can't get the capacity without getting a volume. I hope you understand this. Mass of the ball in kg. If the density is 7.8 gram per cm cube. Do you understand this? Solution. The total surface area of, a, of iron ball is 4 pi r square. Now, what is the relationship between a diameter and a radius? A radius, a diameter is two red eye. Red eye is the plural of the uh, radius. Let's see that. You have it here. The plural of radius. You have red eye. So, Diameter is two radii. Why radius is diameter divided by what? Two. It, since you are giving the diameter to be 12 centimeter, the 12 centimeter divided by two, you get six centimeters. That's how I got my radius to be six centimeter. Now, substitution. That is all about mathematics. Just substitute into the value, into the formula. The four we see here, pi, even though you are not giving pi, pi is 22 over seven by constant. 22 over seven times R square, R square means R times R, which is six times six. If you multiply four times 22 times six times six, you get 3,168 divided by seven. If you divide that correctly, you get 452.57 centimeter square. That is the total surface area of that sphere, of that ion ball. Now, we come to the volume. Like I told you, you can't get the cap capacity without getting the volume. Volume is four over three pi r cube. Remember that? Good. Now, substitution again. Four over three times 20 over seven times r. Now it's in three places. Six times six times six. This three can go here and give me two. So four times two, four times 22 times two times six times six will give me 6,336 all over seven. If you divide, you have 905.14 centimeter cube. Do you understand this? Good. Capacity. Like we said before, centimeter cube, if you want to take the capacity, you divide by 1,000. You divide by 1,000. Because one liter is equal to 1,000 centimeter cube. So if you are moving centimeter to liter, you divide by 1,000. If you are moving liter to centimeter, you multiply by 1,000. Do you understand this? Now let's go on. The same thing happens, happened here. The 905.4 centimeter cube I got, I'll divide it by 1,000. If you do it that correctly, of course, by elementary method, one, two, three, you have 0 0.905 liters, liter, or 0 0.90514 liter, as the case may be, which is approximately one liter. So that means the iron ball is approximately one liter. Now, density. What is density? Density is equal to mass over volume. Remember, I've gotten our volume. This is our volume here. And we have been given the density from the question. So if you want to calculate the mass, all you need to do is cross multiply. By cross multiplication, mass equals to density times volume. Do you understand this? Good. So what is our density given? 7.8. Remember, it was given as 7.8 gram per cm cube and you are asked to calculate it in kilogram 
you are asked to calculate it in kilogram. Now, using your normal metric uh, conversion, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. So if you are moving from gram to kilogram, you'll be dividing by 1,000. You divide by 1,000. So that will be 7.8 divided by 1,000, which will give me 0 0.0078 multiplied by the volume. 0, 8, uh, 905.14. If you do the math, the mass of the mass of the iron ball will give what? 7.06 kilogram, which is approximately 7 kilogram. Do you understand this? Please, do you understand this? I'll be giving you assignments on the group chat that you'll be submitting. Then by the next class, we'll be talking about the hemisphere, the torus, and the disc. The examples, of course, so that you understand better. And after that, we'll move to other ones. I still remember Azir Udoji Kingsley. Thank you.